Welcome to Cases of Mistaken Identity. These tutorials are based on real questions asked by my medical and dental students over the years. This is case number seven. Who knows? I'm Dr. Katherine Moore, the histology wizard. Students often mix up the two major types of tissue found in the nose, olfactory epithelium and respiratory epithelium. So let's investigate. Now in routine, H&E stain slides, olfactory tissue resembles respiratory tissue. Both are found in the nose, the tissues are eosinophilic, and both contain large numbers of ciliated cells. The lamina propria of both of these tissues contains glands, although olfactory typically has more. But without other cues such as location or special staining for olfactory sensory neurons, identification isn't always easy. But there are several things that might help you tell these tissues apart. Number one is the types of cells that we see in each tissue. Number two, the height and general appearance of the tissue. And three, the presence of special axon bundle structures in the olfactory mucosa. Now let's start by reviewing respiratory epithelium. Here's a cartoon of respiratory epithelium. First, note that there are three major types of cells in this pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium, basal cells, a lot of ciliated cells, and goblet cells. The easiest cell to recognize is the goblet cell, which actually can appear goblet shaped and even have a little bit of a stem. But the content of these cells is foamy or opaque, making them very recognizable. Now let's compare to olfactory epithelium. This cartoon shows the three cell types of olfactory epithelium. Again, basal cells, a special support cell called the sustentacular cells, and a lot of olfactory receptor neurons, which are ciliated cells. Now, unlike the respiratory epithelium, olfactory doesn't have many, if any, goblet cells. Instead, again, they contain those sustentacular support cells, and those cells have nuclei that tend to line up at the apical surface of the epithelium. In general, the appearance of olfactory epithelium is taller compared to respiratory. There are a lot more cells and cell nuclei that are visible in this epithelium. And those cells are skinnier or more spindly than the cells in the respiratory epithelium. Now this last difference technically isn't in the epithelium, but a difference in the lamina propria. Recall that olfactory receptor cells are actually bipolar neurons, and each one has an axon that will project to the olfactory bulb. Well, it turns out that those axons bundle together in structures in the lamina propria called philia, and you can see several of those in this section. And these bundles together will form the olfactory nerve, cranial nerve one. Now I want you to note the wavy nervous tissue in these bundles, and remember that like other nerves we've looked at, the nuclei that you see belong to glial cells, not to the neuron. This image, shows a number of these philia in the lamina propria of this olfactory mucosa. Now let's review the differences. Here in these two images, I hope that you can now appreciate the many goblet cells of the respiratory epithelium, the taller appearance of the olfactory epithelium, and here, remember to look for those axon bundles or philia in the lamina propria of olfactory mucosa. I hope that these tips will help you solve this case of mistaken identity. Thanks for stopping by.